Hello and welcome back to the Amazon European Masters. Thank you very much to Marder and Viper Room. What a cast that was. It's now time for myself and of course my brother Nymera to take on over and what an insane back half of the day we have. Yeah, we have two NLC versus LFL matches and then of course we have LVP versus Prime League to finish things off. We can talk about all of these so oh, yeah. much at the point, but I'm looking forward to all three of these. These are going to be great for, you know, the typical benchmarking of these regions against each other. And particularly for the LFL versus NLC, it is a rivalry which has existed in some segments for a little while. Mm. But of course, given this spring, which what happened between our teams there, the LFL's very much taken the lead in that matchup. And uh, now's our time to maybe strike back a little. That's exactly it. And, you know, it's, it's a pretty crazy one in general because... All of these matches, all the teams are currently undefeated. So right now we need to see where the litmus test is, right? Who's actually coming out stronger? The minute, of course, LFL looking incredibly favored as the reigning champions. And speaking of that one, as we said, Dusty versus Game Ward coming up. Both teams are those 2-0. Oh. Both of those teams looking very strong. Both those teams, though, when we were kind of working out what we thought of them and chatting with some of the experts for the LFL in particular to get our brains around that team, were saying very smart, cerebral teams. Yeah, and because this is a matchup which we're both very much looking forward to, we did reach out to a number of folks on the LFL English broadcast, Middlecart, Rudude, and Don Jake as well, to figure out what they thought of Game Ward, because my own perception was that Game Ward were the beatable LFL team. Ooh, now, I words. don't know if that is true, because I look at this team and they are incredibly intelligent. And if you look at what uh, the other folks that we're talking to uh, we're saying as well, these are the big brains of the LFL and Dusty aren't dissimilar. I love the way that both of these teams approach their own win conditions. Mm. And I'm very much looking forward to how Game Ward approach trying to shut Dusty down because they've gone towards quite niche setups and quite comfort picks, which they've crutched on towards the end of the uh, end of the summer season. Absolutely have. And we'll see whether that is what managed because Game Ward over on the blue side, getting rid of the Seraphine, which Dan Vox they made a very dangerous uh, opponent on, of course, alongside Backlands Yasuo. But on the other side, it's the Yumi. No surprise. So very, very strong. We saw that cause a huge turnaround in the late game. Literally just last game, a zero way away from Chekalad as the LeBlanc is taken away from none other than Backland. It's a lot of comfort. It's not like it is your Zeris or your Civis. And it's also not something like the Aphelios, which then Voxley has gone towards. I was actually wondering whether Game would want to ban away that Aphelios. It's allowed Den Vox and Stan to play through a very lame dominant 2v2 laning phase. It's less about the early skirmish and more about raw 2v2 power. Aphelios Thresh, Aphelios Nautilus, which is also one of Sten's most played champions too, with things exactly. that I had my name on. Taking away that Civet, I think that's very important from Dusty. It stops one of those more stable laning phases, which maybe their 2v2 wouldn't want, well, wouldn't be able to exploit as much. Now the first pick hover here. Currently the Swain has been so potent over recent patches. And in fact, again, in that last game was a huge part about how Knight helped carry the victory in that one. But instead, it's fading a few other options okay. here as well. Instead, it will be that Renata first pick to go down for Chameleons. Yeah, and um, Don Jake was saying that even though uh, this bot lane has gone towards uh, more safe scaling picks, mm. and there's a lot of Ezreal in there, a lot of Sivir, Callista Renata and other kill lanes are something which are very memorable from this bot lane. Game Ward have played through pressure bot side. You see that Dusty on the other side are looking at what they can lock in. I would expect it to be that a fellow else has been something which they've been very comfortable on. And it allows you with something like a Nautilus to play a bit more lane dominant, even though the Renata is very strong at that in their own regard. It could also look towards more of a kissing special in the Lulu, but you know, Sten's Nautilus, True. a notoriously good thing and a pairing here that has been uh, very common for this team. Let's see what they decide to lock in though might hold on that one a little bit though of course they know what it's going into so don't really need to hide the support for counter pick and there, there is in fact that lulu okay so this is actually not something which dusty have gone towards as much they preferred harder engage onto stand of course there's a hell of a lot of nautilus that that guy has played with that lulu i think you're right it does give you maybe a little bit more self-sufficiency as a bot lane it's harder to go forward but against something like the renata it means you're not playing melee versus ranged and renata does abuse that very effectively. So game ward, uh, game on to them now. What are they going to lock in alongside this? What a this surprise! Be their Renata, so that's the correct call out from that one. Level one power, level three take over the bot side of the map. Dusty need to have a very strong first few levels because everyone knows what happens when a Callista is locked into the game. All Absolutely. resources go bot side. They do it that and debating backing that up with something a little bit more potent from the mid lane. Few hovers here, but I'll hold back until something's actually locked in. And there is the Ari. It's a dive combo, so you can roam down towards that bot side and ensure mm -hmm. the Callista for Inax can get ahead. Yeah, and because the LeBlanc's banned, I think Backland's number one answer to that has been taken off the table. 
I wonder whether you do pick for Backlund right now. He does have a fair amount of champions, which he likes picking out. Uh, you know, he has a very large champion pool. It's not like you should feel forced at this point. I was wondering whether we were going to see something like the Yone, but this is another pick, which Backlund mm. has gone towards every so often. And one of the weaknesses of Ari as a champion, typically through meta, we haven't seen it so much this year, which is why she's been better so much, is that when you're against a champion that can just burst you out in one skill shot, like a full-powered Victor E, or in this case, say, a Paddle Star, yeah. then you can stop being able to position as aggressively. So Dusty picking up uh, another long range champion. So the bottom half of the map for Dusty, all very long range and happy to stand their ground. Question is, can you stand your ground against this uh, pretty nasty dive combo as you're saying from Game Warp? Yeah, can you keep your distance when the Fates call, when the Ari's diving forwards and have still got, of course, to round out the rest of the comp? The Vi away from Game Warp makes a lot of sense. We've seen a number of teams make uh, really disgusting use of that. I think poor old Jessler is going to have PTSD from the other day when Ruby and Lurox doubled up with the Vi in particular from Lorox doing quite oh disgusting no, things for Zero. Again. Yeah. <laughs> zero and seven Zeri is probably a good thing mm. for a lot of viewers out there who've gotten perhaps a little tired of seeing Zeri run over a lot of games, but uh, not going to be the case right now is the Sejuani also taken off the mm. table. On the other side, Game World focusing away some of those Linsas pocket picks, the Jin Zhao and the Graves, two of his more prominent AD options. Yes, yeah, so and something like the Graves, of course, we saw that um, in their... I'm trying to remember if it was their first or their second, second. game. Check on the second game, yes, it was. Uh, and that was, of course, versus the Shalk and Nullfear roster. Um, but Lintus does have a large champion pool. It's played a lot of things which are a little bit more... Uh, um, out there, but of course has got those staples too. Of all the players, I don't mind playing meta. Linsus is the one guy I'm like, kind of okay, agree. you can kind of agree, you can kind of do that. When it comes to Backland and Voxley and Kerberos, I'm like, if you don't give me crazy, I get a little bit worried for your team. But the giving last pick for Kerberos, you potentially have one of those. Well, I'm not going to say crazy picks, but at least a counter pick. Uh, he's very uh, famous for playing the Darius, one of his most famous ch famous champions, was banned away from him several times in this uh, group stage already. Whereas Mel Melanek on the other side has played a lot of tank duty, been happy to trade off Sejuani on a number of games. Nakabane picks up the Lee Sin, which we see less of nowadays, but it allows you to play through an aggressive mid jungle TV2. Mm. And someone like that, Zoe, needs to be very, very careful how you play up in that mid lane now. Fallen out of favor a little bit, but definitely the tools to make that Aphelios, make that Zoe regret mispositioning. Well, the Yorm was locked in, and it's the Kerberos special. Darius locked. Yeah. This was the champion that helped finish up the reverse sweep for Dusty in the finals in the NLC, and it is something Kerberos is very happy to pick into things like the Orn and really try and dominate as the items come in in the top lane. Yeah, and you cannot afford to disrespect this player on this champion, and uh, from, again, speaking of the LFL English casters, one of the things which Game Ward could potentially be criticized for is occasionally getting a little overconfident and showing that disrespect. They are big game players on the other side. These have played, these guys have played some incredible games recently. Oh, yeah. They knocked out Kami Core from this tournament. They are the reason they are not here at this tournament, knocked them out in that best of five. And you cannot afford to take Dusty lightly in this game, just in the same way that our NLC third seed mm. cannot afford to be tripped up by a game ward here and get overconfident themselves. Yeah, and of course you've got you know, Inax and Camellius, this incredibly competent and consistent bot lane, which was kind of hurting Game Ward perhaps a touch towards the latter end of the LFL split where they were dropping games they perhaps shouldn't have been. And, you know, we saw the bot lane still being very, very strong. And that ability to take something like that Callista Renata and try and just run over the early game yes. is definitely a serious win condition for this squad. And see what they can play perhaps against what we've sometimes uh, heard of them accused of, which being a little passive in the early game. You've got the Callista, you've got the dive options. Let's see the early aggro towards that bot side. Yeah, and you cannot afford to be passive when you have an Ari and a Lee Sin as your mid jungle 2v2, especially no. when there are lanes which you need to impact. As a 2v2, Callista Renata obviously very dominant, but where this gets a breaking point is when they get twinned up with one other person roaming to their lane, forcing the fight, and then rolling over with an advantage. You need to see someone from this mid jungle either shutting down this Darius or going full on towards that bot lane and making sure that this uh Aphelios is out of the game and of course uh Dan Voxner did have one of those games he did on, um on the uh Aphelios where they were kind of shut out of the game early against the Draven that got three four thousand gold ahead of course Dusty brought that back to a win but it shows there is a precedent at least for Dusty's bot lane when things aren't all right as rain can uh can be pushed under a little We'll keep our eyes on that. Definitely an option you can see on the CS score. It's first Ward to Inax, who's clearly cleared one out nice and early courtesy of the sweep picked up by Camellius uh, at the beginning of the game. So slight advantage then when you're fighting for things like the level two can potentially make a difference, especially with something as aggressive as a Callista and Renata can be. So we'll keep our eyes on that. But 
again, I do want to take a bit of a moment to talk about bigger picture here as well, because every single team in these last three games, all six, are currently undefeated. All of them looking to be contenders for deep runs into playoffs, potentially even champions for uh, a number of those LFL teams, of course, who, who are uh, the bearers of the will of Kami mm. Core who didn't make it. And that does make these games incredibly important as litmus tests for viewers, for analysts, and for the teams themselves about where exactly the strengths of the various regions in these uh, currently undefeated mm. teams really lie. Now, and that's one of the, my favorite parts about Amazon EU Masters, because you get to sit here and you go, all right, let's see, Rare, where you really <laughs> stack up. All of these fans, all of these folks on Twitter and your social media are saying how good their teams are. Let's see how it works actually on the battlefield, on Summoner's Rift. So in this game, um, get to see how Dusty will uh, approach this LFL matchup. And as much as I do think that Dusty are actually a little underrated as a team, as often the NLC teams are being a, um, you know, a less talked about region in some ways, I think that going up against any LFL team is always just a very difficult task. Dusty coming in 2-0, if they could cap off their first round Robin at 3-0, suddenly you can walk away from that feeling very confident. And that of course gives you that first place going into the, uh, the playoffs draw coming out after that point. And that would be very important. Lots of stakes attached to this one, given how many oh, yeah. strong teams we've seen across the group stage so far. Yeah, I think that is a big difference compared to, say, Spring EU Masters, where you had a few teams who you were like, these look like the front runners. Uh, this time around at the Amazon EU Masters, you've got Unicorns of Love throwing the name in that. Every single one of those LFL uh, teams looking so good as outside oh, Camellius. It's a bit of a chunk there, perhaps more than he was anticipating. We'll see hmm. whether that actually plays out at all. Um, uh, you see, the thing is, yeah, while, while, uh, while, 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 picture, this kind of happens. It's like, while, while the Callista and the Renata are uh, really nice at level one, Aphelios isn't a champion until level two, but once he gets to that level two, he's really happy about life. You can get yourself some strong trades at that point, particularly with uh, Denmark and Stan being very competent 2v2 bot laners themselves. They are worthy of that kind of respect. So we haven't seen any of our big, uh, we haven't seen the first hammer blow no. fall anywhere. And as you're saying, um, game ward are typically potentially a bit passive in the early game. Dusty, it really comes from their lanes first in my eyes, and they're very happy to play around farming up to their first skirmishes where they've been uh, very effective so far. And I'm trying to think who that favors because I think once you get to that Herald fight, I think that game ward have such an overwhelming advantage with oh, potential yeah. of an all null coming in the first Ariel and the first Lee Sin kick of the game. That, those can be very, very important. Never mind if those bot lanes get involved too. So, Dusty, I'm looking for them to not fall into the trap of game ward, just drawing them into an objective at that level six mark where they should be a little stronger and see whether they can find their own power spikes a little later on, uh, particularly when they can get in some of these uh, Darius sided 1vx scenarios with a bit yeah. of help to turn things around. You're kind of waiting on, say, that first item, so Darius has the damage to make sure the resets come through. Similar sort of deal with, like, the Zoe for the poke landing through, and, you know, Thalios would love a Gale Force before he starts yeah. really trying to uh, match up against something like that, those level 6 marks you called out. We'll see whether that actually mm. plays out as the game goes on, of course, because well, the early shove did come through, and X did get that early plate because of that early shove, but right now it is Ooh, pretty stable. It. Backing up forces yep. the flash by just popping the ghost in. You can feel my Mera nodding his head from here going, yes, that is exactly how yes. you want to play that matchup. Yeah. Exactly, because you stack up one or two auto attacks, you get a W reset. If you then get pulled in for the extra slow, an extra couple of stacks, when Darius gets his passive on you early, no one wins that trade. Even the stuff like Trundle, one of the kings of level one, can't do that. In fact, the only champion I can remember in recent memory that could beat Darius at that point was actually Gwen on her Absolutely. release state because her E was such an it attack so speed dumb. steroid that uh, you can even beat stuff like Trendomir as well. But even with that, Cobra Star doesn't need to worry about those champions this one. It's an Orn. An Orn, uh, as much as he is, filling a lot of roles within uh, League of Legends. Very happy to um, run away from that situation and uh, not fight Darius. Absolutely, and we'll see whether that plays up. Of course, Melodic has actually gone towards the spell book, maybe to have more options yeah. to deal with a Darius. Well, let's so, really get away so, with something like a grasp. Mm, exactly right, because you think of the um, the summoners which you have, and the summoners, uh, not the well, the summoners which you can use in fights. They're definitely much more usable than trying to trade auto attack for auto attack and get uh, at risk of those stacks. It's just something which will be very interesting to track, and especially when you can get yourself something like an exhaust later into the game. That can be very, very important for someone okay. like a Wukong and a uh, Darius later into the game. And speaking of this, dominance in the 1v1 and not wanting to trade auto attacks to the Darius, Kerberos starts proxy farming. The, there's no threat on the top side. Why Why can't you, you know? It's a good call by Kerberos. So he knows that the bot lit, the dragon's being taken, so Kerb takes that opportunity to force that one out. Of course, now Melodic's got level 6, maybe a little bit riskier. We'll instead take this opportunity to reset on the blast code for the addition of safety. Let's see what he goes back and gets to suspect something like that half bound axe. 
Okay, so that's the movement speed coming through. So, uh, starting again, just wait until those ultimates come in. Um, got that Herald up in a minute and a half. That's where I think that maybe Game War should be looking towards. Particularly with something like an Orn. Orn can really switch those Herald fights up for you. And that's, of course, what we called that a little earlier. But you can also see what happens. Ooh, Charm traded that. Bubble misses. Charm doesn't. And Backlund takes a tower shot for it. Has to flash yes. away as a Spirit Rush is popped. That is the price of getting hit by a Charm that close to the tower. There you go. So Checklight finding their own individual advantages. Backlund able to sustain back up does have the corrupting potion but it's a micro advantage see what they can do with that one uh, of course we said that game ward have a strong mid jungle tv2 this one's just the mid lane in this case but game ward not looking to exploit anything beyond that stands just coming up to throw down some of those minion dematerializers and hmm. give a little bit of assistance over to his dear support and in fact that might actually have been inspiration from uh, zoe which would make a lot more sense considering considering she's running <laughs> the spell book so take that yes back. well instead where was the relic shield of course uh oh. long gone are the days where yeah. uh, only melee supports took range support that's right excuse. so sten comes in takes a herald for their own good and uh, walks away with it i actually wonder because they took the herald uh not took the herald took that cannon roller cannon well, minion. Well, like, yeah, that's a very small you herald. get the xp from it and that means that maybe you do get a level six for one of these important fights uh coming up soon but uh once again we've yet to see more than like two people on the screen at the same time from each team we're not seeing any of these big convergences of members across the map both these teams very happy to just chill although kerber saying whether well, is stuck between the Ooh. orn and this first ult of the game from lee sims that was important he he's around he's he's on the dust mate gets Paris. knocked up there is the call of the forge god i don't think he's got anywhere to go there's gonna be so much cc nowhere to go down they go and an easy kill as kerber just roaming into the river perhaps it'll blind us out backland in a difficult spot does have the stolen flash at the back out as you get sleepy trouble bubbles so i don't know if there's gonna be any follow-up stand and linsis are around but a little bit low so Think as it stands, maybe an option for Game Ward to start this up. Curve, he's respawning right now, but actually, not going to take this opportunity to mm, start the Baron. Then Foxney's here, handshake lands. Nothing more to write home about right now. So, what happened there was just Dusty uh, maybe falling into a bit of a lull with what was happening with the state of the map. But actually, after this, although Kerberos overextends, goes down for a kill, which goes over the Orn, a lot of ultimates were used by Game Ward. It means that they are they don't have the Call of the Forge God, and they don't have the kick now to potentially contest around this Herald. Dusty have to worry a little less now about some of those engage options. Gives them an angle onto the Herald. Both AD carries farming that bot wave, and Dusty not seeing a contest onto this Herald will take that one for free. There was level 6 on Camellius, so I was just wondering whether they might still feel the need to go for it. But instead, you can see in the bot side, Inax is going to be trading up the Den Voxne. And Kerb still held on to his summoners. Noom is dead to right, so it's still very dangerous. He might still have to apprehend there and start resetting some of that damage. The marks come in and the bleed will come down. And he's a little bit afraid to hit with Melonic, but managing to clear out the wave safely enough for now. And uh, on the bottom side of the map, then Voxne uh, not able to protect their own jungle. And Game World just finding a couple of small advantages. And that's something which a number of LL4 teams have started to really find practice in over this summer, being able to exploit these small advantages. Dusty looking for oh a boy. big one, though. Herald in inventory, looking for a dive. Cyclones in, looking for a second one, using that to rocket it out, trying their best. Misses the auto! Kerberos does finally get it and walks his way out. The bleed is enough. That got bloody close, but they get away with it. They get the kill. They can even think about potentially a Herald, but no, Linsis will decide to reset instead. They okay, and this is actually kind of important. So they had the Herald in inventory, but what you want to do when you have a winning lane in top lane, you actually don't want to go towards putting that Herald in top side because you're already winning that laning phase. You get yourself very, um, actually, Kerberos, you don't want to have mana for anything. You could going to be okay there, buddy. I think he'll be just about all right with the bleed. <laughs> He's got enough for an auto reset. Hasn't we'll, see the, uh, Hasn't we'll see the replay instead. Yeah. Because they manage this one well enough. It's a freebie, right? They understand what's happening with the resets. You've seen Lee Sin on bot side. This is just a free kill. And as I was saying, you don't actually even need to set the Herald down here because you're already winning that lane phase. If you're already getting CS advantages, already getting plates, why would you need to put the Herald down to get an advantage which you were already going to get? Best put it somewhere else to break a rock somewhere else on the map. And as you can see, Goldly, which did go over with that first bleed to Menelnik in that top side, has actually flipped slightly over to the side of Kerberos with his own kill now. And uh, Dusty walk away and even up the uh, small amount of early game plays, admittedly, which have been happening. Absolutely, and perhaps not unexpected between the teams on show. Game Ward, uh, as far as, you know, when we're chatting some of those mm. LFL English casts, so Middle Cotton Rudy were telling both of us that Game Ward's sometimes a bit slow in the early game. Yes. They like to play for the objectives, play to win by without interacting with their opponents too much in the early game and look to 
cross map and play for objectives instead. And that's kind of becoming true right now. My yeah. only worry with that is this Ooh, let's is take Let's take mid lane very quickly. Um, Ashley Observers, if you could toggle the vision here and see how what Backland is playing with, we could see the vision. Because look at these pink wards Ooh. either side. Wow. If you're a Zoe here, and I speak as a mid laner myself, you have to play terrified. You don't get to push up this lane. As much as Zoe can push that way, you don't have safety as Zoe. Who knows when someone can pop out of this fog of war? It means they don't have that positioning to go towards that objective. And like see, look that. at this. You push up the one time. Oh, this is what happens. Shake. The, uh, the hostile takeover, I saw it comes straight on through, but there's a wild growth keeps him alive, trying to flash forward, and they just about turn it around. Ten Fox and they are landing that Moonlight Vigil, but they get out Ooh. alive. Cost a lot of summoners and ultimates to do so though. Timely roam from the bot lane of Dusty into the mid lane, but you can see what happens around uh -huh. that mid lane. However, top side is Melanik who's left on the island. This is the price they showed themselves in the mid lane, but over comes Akabane. Maybe you want to turn this around anyway. The Call of Forge Gold summoned Akabane trying to trade this one out. Will land the cripple trying to strike this one out. That's gonna be a dead Wukong. Checkalab picks that one up. Herald charges though. And in the bot side, somehow, some waste then falls yeah. in the 2v2 under tower. That's your level six from the Callista being used. It's a little later on, but they use the ultimates and Dusty. They kind of lose control of the mid jungle, which means that both sides of the map start losing their own safety. You don't know who's gonna come in from the river. Linsus, Kerberos, they play towards the top side and they get punished this time as Chekalad that walks away with the kill. It has a dark selling inventory, so that's two stacks onto that one. See if he builds into my favorite item in the game, uh -huh. Soul Stealer. But Dusty losing out on both sides, this is a bit problematic for them now because they have been surviving and particularly in this bot side, that's a good thing. But suddenly you're looking at an 800 gold lead exploding over to the Clister who just jumped into that turret, cleanses away that polymorph and then starts going to town on them. We ask them to play a little bit more aggressive and they don't even need any mid or jungle attention. They just do it themselves and suddenly you get wins in mid lane where you blow a load of summons and then you immediately get the kill in the top side. Immediately get the kill in the bot side. And while it's not a huge gold lead, it is a gold lead and that's what yes. Game Ward would like to continue building with. I, I would it. And what it means is that you are just building it into that vision advantage, right? Because you get to this point where so many players of Dusty are like, oh, we'll, we'll get a couple of items. Yeah, but with what vision are you going to be able to <laughs> farm your waves to get that gold to get those items? There's this multi-step process which got, um, Game Ward is sitting here and saying, well, we're just going to cut this pun off nice and early. Very intelligent play for them to just stop these carries of Dusty being able to play the game doing their very best to do exactly that. And the gold's where they need it to be. It's on the Ari, it's on the Callista. Yes, there's just slight leads to Linces and Darius for Kerberos. But honestly, the fact that you've got these two champions, you're wanting to snowball on that one or two item park ahead early on is great news for Game Ward. They're going to have to continue doing it though, because this gold lead in say 10 minutes is not what they're looking for. Yeah, and Dusty actually have managed to get a little bit of control around the bot side of the map for the first time in the last few minutes. Double pink wards, the, the Skull Shrine and two wards alongside it. So actually, bot side from uh, Game Ward of Inax and Camellias, they are sat there and they're not pushing up um, and using their TV2. So it's time to play it safe, which is the correct option in this case. However, that doesn't mean that Backland can keep pushing up. This Zoe hasn't really been able to fish for those bubbles over the wall. Hasn't really been able to impact the rest of the map. It really has risky. been and Nakabane looking towards uh, the, the river plays first and foremost. And Dusty, they would really love to arm wrestle that control away sooner rather than later to get Backland into the game. All the while, though, we've got 30 seconds until second Herald will spawn. It looks like Dusty with the pressure Kerberos ah, is getting. Is They're trying to use that one, but in the mid lane, as you said, Akabani gets the kick, lands the Q after. He's trying to trade this on his back though, but the Q2 will allow Chekalai to secure the kill. Linsas is around, but Akabani on this Lee Sin. Starting to take over just a little bit. Again, it's the mid jungle, it's Game Ward using that vision advantage. And Backland, this player, which we as NLC casters have praised so much over summer. Heck, he was even uh, in the shortlist yeah, for he was MVP. The MVP. No, this guy has been shout out of the game. And Game Ward have just looked at this player and said, how do we make you useless? How do we make you not impact this game? And it has started through that vision control, various members roaming down to mid and controlling that river. Now, Backland will be out on the map sooner um, after that respawn. It does mean that Linsus and crew can get themselves that second Herald, but they are looking down the barrel of uh, what is now a significant gold lead. And yeah. of course, uh, a couple of dragons stacked up too. It's an ocean rift, and that is any rift at this point. Any soul has increased in power ever since the, uh, the dragons have gained a little more power for themselves. 50% per dragon taken. You stack up four of them, and you've actually got a lot of combat stats compared to what you had before. Alex, um, I'm yes, going to interrupt you because you need mm -hmm. to look in the Ari's infantry. Ah, uh, yes. Shackalad has been doing some light reading. Uh, four stacks on the Magi Soul Stealer. Very light. And. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, um, it's a light reading to give an L to the other side. Um, <laughs> and thing is, at this point, is when you get when you buy an Agile Soul Super, it's a very cheap item. And when you're sat on your Mythic item, it means you get a Mythic passive, and it means you can look for plays. Charm dodged away from. You can see the playmaking potential. One kill like this, and suddenly you start snowballing out of control. Does mean the Spirit Rush is down, though, for what would be the sole point of fight. Now, Backland, with a little bit more control of the river, finally yeah, can start helping Linsus do something like this on the other side. Call the Force Squad is summoned. Linsus kicks over the wall. Hostile takeover is all fantastic. And that Kabane has gone in. And he's burning his way down. Stopwatch comes down, though, and Linsus is in trouble. Speedy to Bubble Ball misses on the other side. Denbox is doing his best. In goes to Darius. But he can't get the kill until just now. Shut down onto Chakalad. And goodbye, pages. The library card is getting revoked because that book is coming with no pages back oh. in it. Well, at least he was only on four, right? He says trying to cope his way out of this one. But Dusty, they abuse the fact and exploit the fact that Game Ward, as you were saying, did use a lot of their ability to go forward. And just when Game Ward are grouping up to look towards what's going to happen, Dusty have hit their one item spike. A lot of these champions love to play around that. And a well-timed bubble, a well-positioned engage, meaning that Dusty break the dragon stacking. And now Camellius is out in the middle of nowhere. Overcome the rest of Game Ward, though, and he's going to have to flash the other way. Uses his second flash to escape there. Thought he'd caught <sighs> Camellius, but the rapid collapse from Game Ward protect the support. So, so Backlander was looking for Camellius, but instead finds himself down a flash. But uh, Backland finally gets onto impacting this game. And we were talking about how Backland, wow, great player. Player that's uh, been so good in summer and one that we praise so much. Haven't really managed to impact the game up until this point. Lands one bubble, the rest of the team follows suit. And Dusty managed to get the Darius into the fray. It's another kill for that Darius coming out of this. A dragon, which means that you're not staring down an early soul point. And that's actually very important for the side of Dusty. They managed to stabilize a little bit now to this point. Do indeed. And uh, all the while though, towers are falling. Dusty yet to get any. And of course, no one, I believe, I think the Herald got summoned. Uh, so I'm not sure where it yes, got in summoned. Mid lane. In mid lane. In mid lane. We saw okay. it at the end of that replay, and it slammed into mid turret, taking off half its HP. But it's not enough to force it down. And now you've got the Callista parked in that mm. lane. Good luck returning to kill that, Dusty. Mm. Take a little while. And yes, they lose out on that fight. But Game Ward's still trying to make the best of it and doing what they're used to doing, which is finding ways to cross map. You can see the defense of Camellius led into the top lane tower. And yes, this Darius is certainly very strong. It's at the minute, Dusty lacking that map control. And every Every time they managed to get it, it's been so fast for Game Ward to come back and contest and remove Dusty's vision. Yeah, it has really been Dusty trying to move across certain areas of the map in waves, getting everyone into mid lane with Kerberos and Stend being there at the same time. Uh, Kerberos rid of muscle, Stend there for the actual wards themselves. And that's why they've managed to get some control over the map. Now they are doing a uh, pretty okay job, considering the champions which are on Game Ward's side, particularly on the bottom half of the map, of course, uh, the Orn being able to follow up from very long range. I expect going more to continue having that vision control for a little while, but Dusty at least keeping some defensive wards in the place. Oh, but he was looking for it. Trying to get his way out, uses the Cyclone, has a second option for that one, no flash though, but manages to bait and switch. And there's still an ultimate from Sten, so Paramount burned, but Linsus gets his way out. Oh, he cost himself an ultimate. It is, but what is this going to cost? Is this going to cost them the turret? See the amount of ultimates available from Game War. They can try and zone out, try and look for a dive. He gets the handshake onto Denbox, but he throws out the ultimate in trade and in axe. Chunk down to about half HP and has to be very careful because the blades whirling around Denbox and it would be a deadly thing for the Clister to fight with right now. Ah, as Kerberos this is an opportunity the 1v1. to find the 1v1. Gets the procs, can start trading back, decimates landing, knocks him way down, but a stopwatch buys time. But how much of it is just not enough? The Noxian Dilladine comes down and he executes the Forge God. Kerberos still trying to trade himself, gets more stacks, can still looking to reset. Oh, oh my god, this Darius is finally shut down. But that god inches away from disaster all the while because so many members went to stop Kerberos Rampage. They're on the bank. Check out though. Do a 1v4. Hold them off the bank. But I wonder. Getting in there. He's throwing out the W. And all the while, then Boris makes you damage. Too nice to trade this one out. Down 3000 HP. And they're just not here. They're going to have to give it up. It's going to charm though onto Zoe. But they've got a wild growth. And Dusty gets the Baron. They get the Baron. They have Calibrum Crescendum. The rifle turrets. The auto attack resets. Back and that sleeve. Gets him. Gets the kill. What a sleepy bubble, and suddenly Dusty managing to match, but the teleport coming through. Can they escape Denvoxny? Severum, Calibrum will try and trade this one out. Malonic stepping forward, trying to land the volcanic. Rupture, Inax taken so down low, but so with Dusty. Managing to turn it around, though. The Binding Eclipse not pulled out, and Dusty escape teleport not quite in time for Malonic. They get away with high, the, the highway robbery. They get away, and they do it right in the middle of... Game War trying to pick up something on that bot side, and they do end up taking down Darius, but at what cost? Dusty catching Game Ward slipping, and now with that Baron, 
you're looking at a map which can start being run over for them now. See if Dusty can push out, keep himself safe, and get that damn vision control back in control. And get control of Gold Lead too. See this replay again, because this bubble from Backland is a thing of beauty. And Backland hasn't actually had many opportunities to impact the game, but then comes right back into it with two really important bubbles. But as we come back to life, Dusty, they've been over pushing and they get punished. Stend one second on the ultimate flash. Can Wild Growth? No, not quite. Doesn't get away with it, but what about a turnaround? So much damage. Sleepy Bug Trouble Bubble lands on the Akabani, but they can't quite secure it. All the while, though, look at Kerberos. He's been the unanswerable problem in the side lane for so long. And he's got a wave and a tower to try and take down. This or was... Or do trade in mid lane. This was exactly what I was worried about, though. If you take a Baron, sometimes you can get into a point where you can push too quickly before you actually have the gold lead if it is a comeback Baron, and you still can get out for it. You can see that Game Ward. They punish Dusty from taking that Baron and pushing a little too quickly. Chomp down on them Vox there and stand. They get themselves onto Soul Point now, and what could have been a game controlling play from Dusty turns out into Game Ward just taking another step further forward. Doing their very best indeed. And Game Ward are so good at this, and what a close game it's been. That is only two and a half thousand gold for the entire graph, pretty much. And you can see how even it's been, despite an early ish gold lead for Game Ward, it has stagnated and now gone back more towards even. It's only 400, 500 gold that really separates these teams now. Yeah, now we're actually starting to see uh, the first uh, Masterwork items coming out. It's going to be a Blood Ward on the side of Inex. Yes, I do know those items Indeed. nowadays. You've drilled me well enough. Helps you uh, win pop quiz, it turns out. Yeah. I'll, but, pull a, um, I'll pull a Viper in for you. What, what do you think? What's a Gordringer upgrade for Morn? Uh, ceaseless Hunger, isn't it? It is indeed. Spot on. Ceaseless Hunger or Endless Hunger? Ceaseless Hunger. Ceaseless Hunger. Endless Winter is what it is for uh, right, right, the okay, okay. either first, right. I believe. See this guy trying to catch me napping. Well, Melnick uh, not going to be napping on this bot side. Might be a back then. Comes down and lands a couple of skill shots, but it is one scale. Melnick having to play on the weak side really has been isolated from the rest of his team to the tune of a 3,000 cold lead in that individual matchup. And Kerberos is now Dusty's wrecking ball onto the map. This man was, uh, of course, the architect of a great amount of their victory against X7 in the NLC finals, particularly with that Darius in that reverse sweep. And uh, to go a quick a bit on story time for those that didn't touch in, catch uh, those storylines at that point, Kerberos has been playing in the UK and NLC scene for a very long time. In their very first finals they ever made it to, I think it was something like six years ago at this point, he was reverse sweat in the finals by Singularity. Also, Orcs, one of the Castle on Heat Masters, was a person to have reverse right. sweat at that point. For him to come back and get his first NLC trophy by reverse sweeping and doing it by his own means with a lot of solo kills, with a Darius and the likes, it was so satisfying for this player. The only thing left is to make a deep run at this tournament, and it would be such a good mark to try and do it here, but his bot lane, Sten gets knocked up, still has the ultimate, doesn't even get a chance to use it. Charm on to Denbox, they afterwards into the Dragon's Rage. And Game Ward punishing in this mid lane time and time again. The bot lane is down for the count. They're down and they keep sitting in this mid lane and they're not able to deal with the huge amount of engage that Game Ward are pulling up against them. Kerberos isn't able to impact this fight. He's in a side lane, but the rest of the map just isn't safe. And Dusty, they lose another turret in that mid lane, another host of kills, and what should be a point of power for them around this side lane, a pushing map, is becoming a bit of a liability because they can't defend their bot lane when it's parked around the map. That ward there is so good. They land the Sleepy Trouble when they think about going for it. Shreli's just pop, but then call the Forge God. Fate sealed. Or fight, sorry, Fate's call. Just so much engagement so long away. Yeah, and you have so much follow-up from this game board side, right? You have pretty much every champion with high mobility or something which can follow through. Even something like the Renata gets to speed someone else else to help help them into the fray game board being very opportunistic about the way that they're playing this game and though it has been a bit of a slow and steady game from them as we've come to expect they're starting to take these opportunities more and more particularly around this mid lane when they can isolate some of the squishier less disengaged heavy members from dusty absolutely and you know dem box is really another item away from being truly dangerous the bloodthirster help keep, help keep him alive if he can auto attack really winning on that infinity edge or lord dominic's regard something else to have reasonable damage in this one while kerberos is pretty much unmatchable at this point the rest of that map as you were saying definitely punishable enough and they managed to get okay, some kerberos control. is here this time kerberos yeah. is here and he's out of vision let's see if game ward can uh that's what i think but they don't see him on the sidelane if he's not on the sidelane chance that he is actually here at the play watch what he can do in these fights if he's isolated alone in the front line that's not particularly good 
course. But if you can start getting target access towards someone like this Callista somehow, some way, and start wailing on the carries he needs to, that's the fight which Justy are looking for. So, game ward, try and isolate that Darius, try and pin them down, separate the front light so the, the, the damage dealers can't get on top of them, but check a lad looking for the picks. Baron has spawned and that's why the pressure suddenly heads on in Baton looking for a pick over the wall. It is Dusty with control of the river but for some reason both teams have reversed sides of the map trying to control the mid lane. Good bubble onto, onto Camellius but they can't trade it out. Chekalad on the other side trying to find his way in. Baton goes over the wall but doesn't get that much done. Melonic body Kerberos. blocking Kerberos looks for the apprehend and will not find it. While Backland is now on vision but still lands the bubble regardless. Chekalad trading up the Lincest and definitely wins that one for now. Kerberos stepping forward, sped up by this Lulu, makes him so much harder to track. It's just back this to is, posturing. This is really a game of skill shots. You see that Backland knows that it's very dangerous to head forward in this game. Does have a flash that has some degree of safety, but one bad jump, and that's a charm, and that's something like the Ornn ult being pulled out. And Linsus didn't actually spot that one. Is no. on vision now, is away from it, and now game water going into the pit. The, uh, start the hostile takeover, finally find the right word, isn't going to matter that much because Akabane finds the first kill. Linz into the backline with the Cyclone, he's going to have to start resurrecting. Double apprehend, but kick to him before he can execute. Kerberos falls! The Darius is down, and look who's free firing. It's none other than Inax and Game Ward find four. They lose none, and with a wave, they can try and get an inhibitor, maybe even more. Slow and steady goes the game. Slow and steady goes the base, maybe. These are large death timers, and there's a lot of members alive from Game Ward. Backland alive, but jumping forward. Does land the sleepy bubble, but cannot finish up the kill. Camellius body blocks and shoots him down with the pistol. Renata Glass will protect her investments, teleporting in. I think this might just be it. And it was on a knife's edge, but one fight seals it. Game Ward, this LFL team from this such a prestigious region, takes down the NLC first seed. It was a nice fight, but it is Game Ward who find the greater wound. They will stab into the heart of Dusty. The turnaround attempted is just not enough. Viva La France, Game Ward remain undefeated while Dusty suffer their first loss. So, first round Robin done from both of these teams. Two and one to Dusty. 3-0 and oh for Game Ward. We were talking about how important this game would be, of course, head in terms of head-to-head, -head, in terms of these teams realistically looking like the two which are front runners in this group, not just on wins, but in the way that they've been playing as well. So, NLC take another loss in the LFL rivalry. And Game Ward, again, just show us the level that this French region brings to play. They really, really do. And it was, in fairness, a very close game. Some brilliant little plays from both sides. Kerberos Darius was so deadly. But when it came to those vision traps, when it came to punishing with those vision traps, it was just so, so well managed by the side of Game Ward. Uh, just working on word from production to know whether we're good to throw. But you know, again, it was a very close match for large periods. Just not quite enough from Dusty and well managed by Game Ward when some things weren't going quite their way. Yeah, and you know, I think this is really testament to Game Ward looking at an enemy team and saying, what do you need to do to win? Let's just stop that. And that is a very... It sounds simple, right? But it's a very hard skill set to find within the ERL system. And Game Ward, very intelligent team, showing, of course, exactly they know what they can do. Kerberos, for all his individual lead, couldn't impact those team fights and couldn't break open the game in time. Absolutely. But I think with that, we are going to throw to a quick break. And while we do that, you're going to check out the Warner song of the day. Fred, again, always. We've got to apologize. This is the interview. Slight change to the schedule sheet. So instead, we're going to have an interview instead. Uh, come on and do that one. Congratulations on the win there. <laughs> a little bit close, but you close it out in the end. Hello, hello, guys. Can you hear me? S I can yes, indeed can. hear you. Sorry about that little mistake. I uh, had no, a show. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You don't like me? It's fine. I'm gone soon. I'm I, gone I know, soon. Don't you know, worry. I, I needed a moment to recover from the NLC losing. You know, I can't deal with that. Uh, How are you feeling no. after the win? Because obviously, mid game got a little bit dicey with that, Darius. Uh, I think Darius was really troll pick. I don't know what are you doing, Kerberos, but it's not the best champion to pick <laughs> right there, I would say. And. I think mid game we started actually playing like better. Like we, there was some mix, uh, mis execution in one fight or two. That's why like it looked rough. But I think we had everything under control, and I'm really happy that Iceland, I guess, doesn't have uh, 100 win rate anymore. <laughs>
<laughs> so one thing which I'm really interested in, because this does revolve around mid laner, I'm a mid laner myself. When I looked at how Backland on the Zoe had to play that game, he had like zero vision to work with and yourself and your team did a really good job of controlling the vision which the Zoe could play around. What was the thought process around that? And do you feel like you played it out well enough? Uh, I think like we have like mid prior and bot prior and like the, it's really hard for them to actually like, retake I think because like we have just better champion in skirmish and he actually plays decent as I just saw one trick you know so I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> surprised uh, he was farming really well like we were like going equal farm like for first 10 minutes it was it was actually pretty interesting I would say and what was the question? <laughs> uh, so you you had like really good vision control in the around the mid la mid lane, and when you're playing yeah. Zoe, it's really hard to play against that. What was the thought oh, yeah, process yeah. around so, like getting that vision control? And do you think you played it well? <laughs> uh, I think like Zoe when she has like when Zoe is behind or like team is behind, like it's really hard to play her, and like this champion becomes useless. Like we played one game in LFL, and I played Zoe, and we are behind, and it was really hard. Like you you just can't play. And I think I played good this game. I was I, I missed like two charms like 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 noob, but the rest the rest was good, you know. I felt hey, but you build a magic, yeah, so I was time. happy. Yeah. Yeah. So also a really important question now as well. Um, of course, you were the slayers of Carmine Core in players in LFL, and by the transitive properties, you now carry the will of that team. So how likely are you now to win the whole thing, having you know taken the powers of Carmine Core? You know, as long as every team uh, is in the run in new masters it will be hard battle but if for some reason every lfl is gone like we are winning the the new masters for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much check had real pleasure talking with you uh very happy with the win sad of course for dusty uh, out from our home region but excellent win nonetheless <laughs> wish you luck with the rest Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Look at this. Throwing shade at us. What is this? Honestly. Uh, so lovely talking to you, dude. Wish you the very yeah, best of luck with the rest of the tournament. And we'll see you around. Thank you so much, guys. Salute. Uh, honestly, what is this? We're getting, this getting shade from the Never players now. What are we going to do? Again. I know. You know, we're out of here. Well, it was a really lovely talking to him, of course. A really strong win from Game Ward once they managed to play around the vision. We start to head in some of these mid lane plays because honestly, this one. Dusty kind of got away with it. Yeah, but the more I think about it, the more I look back in this game and I go like, huh, the plays which Dusty made were difficult to make. Game Ward never made it easy for them. And while there were some skirmishes where Bubble would land or Kerberos would get something in the side lane, I always felt heading into the skirmishes that Game Ward had the better position. I think that is, again, really testament to this team which has come in with such a high reputation to hold up. It is, and they managed to get these consistent picks in the mid lane, really play around it. And then, despite this really good Baron take from Dusty, you know, don't take it away from Dusty. They did have some good moments in this one. Uh, they just couldn't quite close it out. And the moment Kerberos is unable to do what he's supposed to do, which is find these murderous team fights in the resets, that's just like a good kick there. They will just kind of run over it. Callista gets the free fire. Yeah, and uh, now Dusty will have to walk away, and at least they'll have some footage to review from this one. Of course, we see the gold graph and where those fights came oh, in. Yeah. You see those big, big dips towards Dusty, but it just wasn't enough. Could leverage their advantages enough, and particularly in that trying to hold that mid lane, they uh, were picked off time and time again. So they walk away, uh, having to lick some wins a little bit and come around to the second round. Robin, with uh, a couple of fresh ideas needing to be thought of. I absolutely will, and it was a banger game, and I'm hoping the rematch will be just as much of a banger. But it is time to start thinking about the next game, which is, of course, LDLC versus X7 of all teams, a massive rematch from Spring. And that means it's time to throw to the break. And while we do that, we're going to kick back and listen to the song of the week, courtesy of Warner Bros, which is uh, the Switch House Mafia, uh, with the likes of, as if I can find the notes of who it is, I can't quite remember. Either way, it's Turn Out the Lights. We're going to listen to that one as we head into the break.